If you're working on any kind of apps with a start time and end time, you might be tempted to creating two columns, one to represent the start time and one to represent the end time. But Postgres actually has a special data type called range, which can hold the start time and end time as a single value. Range type column allows you to do things like prevent overlaps or be able to query other rows that overlaps with a certain range. So here's what I'm talking about. Let's say we have a reservations table with title. You could have columns start at and end at representing the start and end of the reservation. But instead, we could represent the start and end using a range column. TSTZ range here stands for timestamps with time zone range. Let's run it and create the table. Then let's try to insert some data. Insert into reservations, we can specify title and reservation period. The title can be something like Tyler Dinner. And here's how you specify the range column. You have the start time, comma, end time. The start and end is wrapped with either a bracket or a parentheses. So a range column has a start value and an end value. If it has square brackets, that means that end is inclusive. And parentheses means it's exclusive. Data types other than timestamps can be ranges such as dates or numbers. Coming back to the SQL editor, let's insert this row. Then let's select it to see what it looks like. We can see that the format follows the exact same format that we've provided. Let's add another reservation. Let's say Thor is coming to dinner from 8 p.m. to uh, 10 p.m. We can run this query. And great, now we have two rows. Now let's perform some basic range operations on it. Probably the operator that will be most used is the overlaps operator. You can use it in a WHERE clause to compare the range column against a provided range value. This query here will return all the rows where the range is overlapping with July 4th at 4 p.m. to July 4th at 7 p.m. Let's run it to see what we get. And we only get Tyler dinner back because Thor's dinner starts at 8 p.m. We can also order things by the range column. It'll first store things by the start value and look at the end value if the start value is the same. So if we insert another reservation where John comes to have a dinner, starting at the same time as Thor, but he's going home an hour early, this John's reservation is going to show up in the middle when we sort it by the reservation period. Now let's look at what kind of constraints we can apply to range columns. We want to configure a database so that if there's a reservation, other people cannot insert a reservation that's overlapping with the existing ones. They can only insert a row if the reservation does not overlap with any of the existing ones. We can easily add such constraint in Postgres. Let's add a constraint to our reservations table, give it some name, and the constraint type will be exclude using just index, and the condition is reservation period does not overlap. With this simple constraint, we can guarantee that no two rows in our reservations table would overlap with each other. Run it, and we get an error because we already have some overlapping rows. Let me just truncate the table to get rid of all the rows. And then we should be able to add the constraint. Awesome. Let's go back and insert the same values that we had earlier. Tyler dinner starts at 7 p.m. and ends at 9 p.m. And then if we try to insert Thor dinner that starts at 8 p.m. and ends at 10 p.m., Postgres doesn't allow this insert because we have the exclude constraints. If John wants to make a reservation from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., well, too bad for him because I've already got the table. Okay, so this exclude constraint is nice, but in a real world situation, we don't have a single restaurant where everybody tries to fight for a reservation. We have multiple restaurants, multiple table within those restaurants. So how can we model our data like that? Coming back to the SQL editor, let's first add a new column to our reservations table called table ID. Then we can just assign arbitrary table ID to existing rows. Was this just Tyler dinner? So Tyler dinner is happening on table number one. And then let's add another row to this table. Thor can make a dinner reservation on table two, starting from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Now this insert is going to fail because we still have that same constraint. So let's first get rid of that constraint. Run the SQL and the constraint is gone. Now we want to add a new type of constraint here 
one that looks at the table ID and the reservation and makes sure that reservation is not overlapping on the same table ID. We can create such constraint with the help of btregest extension. Enable the extension by running create extension btregest. And we can create a new constraint. The constraint will be an exclude constraint that looks at table ID with equals and reservation period with double ampersand. So it looks for the table ID. If it matches, it looks at the reservation period and makes sure that doesn't overlap. Let's add the constraint and we are good to go. Let's try to insert a new reservation with the same table ID with overlapping time as my dinner time. And the insert fails because, well, we are trying to make the reservation on the same table. If we change the table ID to 2, the insert succeeds. If we select all the rows in our table, we can verify that we have two rows, one for table 1 and one for table 2. And that's how you can utilize range types to create a sophisticated reservation system in Postgres that is secured at the database layer. If you want to learn more about other advanced data types in Postgres, you can check out this video right here where I talk about JSON and JSON B-type columns. I will see you in another Postgres video. Bye!